Once upon a time, in a little room, immersed in the stillness of the night, a little light was flickering, seemingly unable to rest. For many years she had protected the mistress's sleep through the darkest nights, but now something was troubling her deeply. The little light gathered her magical energy and began to flutter around the room. She needed to clear her mind. She paused to look at a picture of her keeper, Alicia, with a thoughtful but determined air of someone who knows it's time to act. The girl with the sweet and ready smile was in the dark place, but the little light had a plan. All she needed was a willing helper, and she knew exactly where to find the perfect candidate. I knew that she wouldn't die that easily. Thanks for the vote of confidence, not to mention the assassination attempt. I've got the room all ready for our final dance. And I can't wait to paint it with your blood. It's an honor for my scissors to accept your invitation, milady. <gasps> um, maybe I should have warned you about something. In the midst of blood, I get much stronger. Fairy's voice boomed through the cave with the force of a mighty roar. And the roar grew louder, and louder still, the cave itself was roaring. From the walls to the vault, everything started shaking. The cave was collapsing. Teddy ran towards the sunlight as fast as he could, dodging the deadly rocks that were falling all around him. He summoned up his last reserves of energy, and he leaped out of the cave, just before it came crashing down behind them. Safe from danger for now, Teddy and Lighty paused to catch their breath in a verdant clearing. I have a very bad feeling about this. Oh, come on. How in tarnation am I supposed to kill this thing? I smell the stuffing of a teddy bear. Mm. 
I've been waiting for you, my little dinner. Bow to your king. Your majesty, you better get out of here before your dinner kicks your- Wife! Why is my dinner still alive? Wife? Not now. Is this overgrown troglodyte your wife? Now that you mention it, I remember the story a little differently as well. You insolent bear. You're mine. This castle is mine. Everything you see is mine. Wife, pick me up. Let's make them pay. Yes. He jumped onto the paper airplane, animated by Lighty's magic. As the giantess's hand fell upon them, the two heroes took flight, escaping the terrible creature. The king, furious, ordered his wife to chase them. She had to catch them at any cost. She broke into a desperate run, reaching up, 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 to seize the two fugitives. Without realizing, there was no longer any ground beneath her feet. Free of pursuers, their journey continued without incident. Then Teddy saw a mistress floating island in the distance. The airplane glided down to the surface of the sea, and Lighty promptly turned it into a small boat. Our plucky adventurers had reached the fabled Never Again land. Avast, ye scurvy landlubbers! Stop where you are! That was just a shot across your bow. The next will send ye to Davy Jones' locker. What? What kind of creature are ye? Ye don't look like one of those cursed fairies who plunder me loot to exchange it for useless teeth. I beg your pardon? Ye're about the same height as a dwarf. I want ye and my crew. Ye will be the fluffy personal dwarf, and that's an order, or I'll pull out your stuffing for me pillow. A tantalizing proposal, Captain, but I'm only here to get your treasure. Ye scurvy-ridden scallywag. Arr! 
You're starting to shiver me timbers. And no mistake, dwarfs, load your cannons, prepare to board. The darn pirate is hiding behind the parapet. Is there no way to reach her? That chest is full of fairy dust. Let's find a way to exploit it. There's nothing behind me, only my shadow. Oh, bring it on.
bad for a miserable old bear. You saved me from that shadow. You little brat. Nobody ever teach you manners. You're all the same, you grown-ups. You think you can teach us how to live, how to be wise. But just because you don't have much longer to live, it doesn't mean you can carry on living through us. I don't claim to be the wisest, but I'm not stupid enough to believe you're a normal kid. You stink of death. You were controlling that shadow, weren't you? You're a shrewd one, Grandpa. I'll make you an offer. I'll allow you to drink from my fountain of youth. A single drop could make you at least ten years younger. And I'll let you go. I'd rather not fight. It would risk ruining my flawless skin. This thing. Don't tell me it's- It's an elixir of youth. Don't make that face. All those brats ever thought about was playing games. It didn't take much for me to lure them with my pan flute. Like so many mice. I kill those other demons because it was my duty. But with you, it's personal. I'm gonna cut you to pieces. Just then, a sudden gust of wind blew out of nowhere. The fairy dust scattered on the wind, and the unfortunate bear began to fall. He fell into the deep blue sea. Teddy gasped for air. His fur was soaked through and he struggled to stay afloat. He hadn't noticed that the ominous black smudge below him was getting bigger and bigger. An enormous and terrible dogfish emerged from the waves and swallowed them whole, before sinking back to the depths of the sea. Teddy and Lighty found themselves in the dark, fetid belly of the beast. The subject, who from now on shall be referred to as the patient, Given the delicate operation it's about to undergo, has finally turned up at the test area. Late. Oh, don't worry. I'll be sure to kill you quickly. The patient continues to be restless and violent. We will therefore proceed with anesthesia for mechanical trauma before full dissection. Who exactly are you planning to dissect? 
the anesthetist in charge will be the eldest of my real children. You're calling this thing a real child? You really are crazy. The patient's irritating remarks are reminiscent of those lying fairies. They didn't want to use their magic to give me real children. Fortunately, science doesn't lie. And science, yes, science can create life. Now, let the procedure begin. You, how do you get out of this place? You killed the doctor. I'll never help you. Can you at least tell us if the doctor had a plan or some way to get out of here? No, no, there's no way out. Someone here isn't very good at lying. Let me take a look around. Let's see what I can find. Even if you do find a way out, we're still at the bottom of the ocean. There is no escape. Let's see. Nails, bolts, wooden planks, shark blood. These are all the items he used to create these strange creatures. We aren't strange. We're normal children. 
Aha! Uh -huh. Water fairy dust! This could be useful. You fairies are already useless when you're alive, let alone as dust. Their dust makes everything waterproof. We'll need it in the ocean. Hey, you talking pile of wreckage! If you don't tell us how to get out of here, you're gonna die too! I don't care! You won't get anything out of me! There! There's no more time! We have to escape! Darnation! What had begun as mere sparks were starting to burst into hungry flames. A roaring fire soon broke out, and Teddy and Lighty were forced to flee. The laboratory was now completely engulfed in flames, and thick smoke spread through the beast's entrails. Eventually irritating the terrible dogfish enough to cause it to spasm and sneeze violently. Teddy and Lighty seized the opportunity to let themselves be launched out of the huge creature onto the seabed with the dark and mysterious ocean all around them. Welcome to Valor of the Dry World. I'm impressed. You surpassed my dragon fleet and my army of centaurs. Are you talking about the seahorses that shoot bubbles and the leaping seals with the tridents? I know you are here because the rumors of my beauty have reached you. Well, actually... Gaze upon me! Drink in my beauty with your eyes! You have earned it! Also, because it's the last thing you'll do before becoming a part of my collection of human treasures. Are you done? I'd rather gouge my eyes out than have to look at you, you weirdo fishwoman thing. Oh, you're one of those, are you? One of those poor, envious people who try to belittle true beauty. As you wish, you can still admire me while I kill you.
Teddy kept going, running, swimming, and flailing through the putrid slosh of the sewers. When they reached the end of the pipe, our trusty companions found themselves in the city's enormous sewage treatment facility. There seemed to be no other way out, so Teddy decided to try pulling the chain in the center of the room. The room flooded with water, creating a whirlpool that flushed them away along with the waste, like an enormous toilet. Tossed about and half submerged, Teddy was sacked into an even more tortuous pipe until he was finally sped out of the drain in a jet of slime. The drain seemed to have dropped our heroes into an equally fetid swamp. You had the chance of being lulled to a sweet, ecstatic death. But since you insist, I will just have to tear you limb from limb. in tatters. Command of the haughty willow wisp, an opening appeared in the wall of brambles in front of Teddy. Before setting off, Teddy contemplated the dark tangle of gruesome brambles for a moment. Following the magical flame, Teddy hesitantly set off along the oppressive path that seemed to lead to the deepest depths of that accursed forest. At the end of the perilous journey, Teddy looked up in awe. An imposing castle rose from the ground at the heart of the malignant dark forest. One final challenge awaited Teddy within those decrepit walls. It would have been better for you if you had been defeated by the mirrors, little knight. Now you will have to suffer a much, much worse fate. find a way to use its flames against him.
After a grueling battle, Taddy managed to force the terrible dragon to land. To save Alicia, there was just one last thing to do, and Teddy was ready to deliver the coup de grace. He summoned his last reserves of energy, gripped the sword tightly with both hands, and threw himself against the enemy with every ounce of fury he had in his body. The thought of Alicia was his beacon, the dragon's beating heart, his target. Teddy prepared to deliver the powerful and deadly blow, when suddenly, at the last moment, Lighty removed her charm from his scissors, turning them back into two harmless pieces of rusty metal. The bear, confused, lost his balance, turning just in time to see a powerful magical ray piercing both him and the dragon. Betrayed and defeated, he collapsed on the battlefield. Teddy was immersed in impenetrable darkness. He allowed himself to be lulled by the void. No little girl to save, no enemies to fight. Finally, he could rest. So what was that nagging sense of discomfort which was becoming more and more intense? Could the thought of having abandoned Alicia cause as much pain as being pierced by a needle? Ugh. A porcelain doll was tending Joe's wounds. As he was looking around in confusion, the witch cat hovered. He shivered. Was this the end? The cat reassured Teddy that nobody meant him any harm. But the time had come to clarify. To clarify what? That the demons he had killed were Alicia's dream guardians, the defenders of her inner realm. But... How could the Guardians have taken on such monstrous forms? The cat explained everything. Alicia's subconscious was reacting violently in order to protect her, like an immune system attacking a virus. And this virus had a name, Lighty. So that sneaky little bug had been trying to worm herself into Alicia's subconscious to corrupt her. But why had Lighty chosen him to carry out her evil plan? The answer was simple. He was the strongest and the bravest of Alicia's guardians. Was he really one of the guardians? How could he have forgotten? When Alicia had abandoned him in the chest, a crack of weakness had opened in his soul, giving Lighty the opportunity to put her wicked plan into action. She had wiped a vital part of his memory with a spell, causing him to forget his true role and his power. The frightful fairy had tricked him, turning Alicia's most stalwart defender into a ruthless weapon to attack her with. The defeat of each monster had nourished Lighty's magical powers, allowing her to grow stronger and stronger. Teddy was aghast. So that was why the witch cat seemed to have always known him while he couldn't remember anything. He had forgotten that she had once been his most trusted ally in protecting Alicia. He had forgotten that the cat was a unique creature that resided in the deepest part of the girl's subconscious. The cat was her limbic system, her super ego, the supreme entity that defended her unconscious self, and as such her powers could only be fully manifested in the furthest reaches of Alicia's dreams. The witch cat could only look on helplessly from afar as events unfolded in the rest of Alicia's dream world. At first, the cat was enraged as she watched Teddy assault Alicia's dreams, but she knew that mere words would not be enough to convince him of Lighty's true nature. She decided to try provoking him, mocking his beloved mistress, hoping that his anger would reawaken his memory and rekindle his powers. Unfortunately, things didn't go according to plan. The cat was thus forced to play a more subtle game, lurking in the shadows, waiting for Lighty to reveal her true nature. Each time the witch cat met Teddy, she had absorbed as much of his power as possible in order to heal the wounded guardians. The fog in the bear's head was slowly clearing. He still had a lot of unanswered questions, but his anger at 
Lighty's betrayal and his determination to save Alicia awakened a strength that had lain dormant for too long. A burning fire, ancient, powerful, and reassuring, enveloped him. Teddy had become more savage, a feral creature. To fight a nightmare, you have to become one yourself, he finally understood. The time had come. The witch cat sent him back to the world of dreams, but nothing was as he remembered. Hey, light bulb. How much did you eat while I was away? You? How can you still be alive? I have absolutely no intention of getting killed without destroying you first. Do your worst. I am now a goddess in this world. Bulb. Ready for round two? A goddess. Shut up, insolent bear! Your light was supposed to protect and reassure Alicia. Instead, it was hiding your true nature. How dare you judge me? Have you seen yourself in the mirror recently, you monster? My appearance reflects exactly what I am. A furious bear who is going to kill you. There's still time to see the error of your ways. It doesn't have to end like this. No, Bear. This is exactly how it's supposed to end. We dedicated our existence to protecting Alicia in her sleep, only to be abandoned. Only one of us gets to decide how this story ends. I get where you're coming from. We're both old, worn, and tired. But just because our energy has faded, that doesn't give us the right to absorb hers. It's too late for noble words now, Bear. Let's settle this once and for all. This isn't the ending I wanted. I'm not going to. 
to back down now. Bring it on, light bulb. Sense. His deeds will inspire ballads for years to come. It was a hard-fought victory. Let him have a little peace. Rest now, Teddy. You've been a very good bear. The nightmare was finally over. Alicia, illuminated by a ray of morning sunshine, opened her eyes. Her parents were there. Staring at her in disbelief for a long moment. Before taking her and holding her in a warm embrace. Who knows what challenges lay ahead for the little family. But for one magical moment at least, they all lived happily ever after.